Welcome to this Powered by Hiscox. I'm your host, Sanjay Parekh. Throughout my career, I've had side hustles, some of which have turned into real businesses. But first and foremost, I'm a serial technology entrepreneur. In the creator space, we hear plenty of advice on how to hustle harder and why you can sleep when you're dead. On this show, we ask new questions in hopes of getting new answers. Questions like, how can small businesses work smarter? How do you achieve balance between work and family? How can we redefine success in our businesses so that we don't burn out after year three? Every week, I sit down with business founders at various stages of their side hustle to small business journey. These entrepreneurs are pushing the envelope while keeping their values. Keep listening for conversation, context, and camaraderie. When you think of wedding photos, you might think of classic moments captured, a white dress, a groom adjusting his tie, smiling faces in front of a church. These scenes are timeless and beautiful, but our guest this week wanted an alternative to traditional photos and catered to couples who wanted to get outside and get out of the box on their big day. Kat Carney is an adventure wedding and elopement photographer and the owner of Swell and Stone. She photographs elopements and small outdoor weddings and has captured marital moments of happy couples from the deserts of Southern Utah to the rocky beaches of Maine. Kat is pushing the envelope and expressing her creativity daily with Swell and Stone, and we're thrilled to have her on the show today. Kat, uh, welcome to the Side Hustle to Small Business podcast. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm super excited to talk to you uh, because I think your background is so fascinating and just what you do uh, day to day is just so, so interesting. And and it's going to be, I think, um, very interesting to our, our listeners but first, I want to talk about uh, how did you really become an entrepreneur I- the first time? Well, was it with Swell and Stone or did you have some kind of entrepreneurial experience like when you were younger? Yeah. Um, well, other than when I was younger, I like ran a babysitting business and ha- helped my brother with his lawn mowing business. So I guess that can be considered my early entrepreneurial um, endeavors. But yeah, uh, absolutely, that counts. <laughs> okay. I mean, 100% that counts. Other than that, I did, um, and I still do actually run another photography business called, um, just Cat Carney Photography, just my name with photography. And, um, with that, I did commercial and editorial work, uh, specifically like in the adventure sports realm. So like I was shooting uh, climbing, canyoneering, surfing, a lot of the same stuff that I do now, except for people weren't getting married. It was just like people in the outdoors, essentially. Um, and I still do that to some degree, although it is becoming a smaller and smaller portion of what I do every year as well and stone grows. And I, I really focus more energy on that. Um, so yeah, like, uh, I started doing, so I started doing cat carny photography, um, in 2009, I think when I graduated college. Um, but I didn't ever do it really full time until, um, 2016. And then I started Swell and Stone in 2018, I want to say. Um, and um, yeah, so from from there, it's been, but I've been working full time in the photography realm for myself since 2016, essentially. <laughs> okay. So so coming out of college, um, you were kind of doing this as as kind of a side thing. Were you working for somebody else during that time? What, yeah. What were you doing as you, like your full time regular mm-hmm. gig? I had several, <laughs> several other jobs, <laughs> especially my first year out of college in 2009, if you know you remember correctly, it was right after the, the housing crash and yeah, it was, like, it wasn't the, a great time to be getting out in the, uh, no, the market. It was there was turmoil. It? Yeah, it was crazy. So um, I worked a number of um, seasonal jobs, I guess. For I guess that's what I would call them, for lack of a better word. Um, so I worked in in um, Alaska and then in Colorado. Um, mostly like waiting tables or doing stuff like that. And then I got a job as a collegiate uh, assistant volleyball coach and I played volleyball in college also. So I was like, okay, what skill sets do I <laughs> have that I can I have student loans to pay? Like I need a job that's going to pay me money. Um, turns out that job didn't really pay that much money, but <laughs> it was a job. Um, and so I moved to Southeast Kansas and I'm from Kansas originally, but I moved to Southeast Kansas for that. And for two years, I did that uh, along with a number of other things. So I actually worked at the small town newspaper at the same time that I had the assistant co- volleyball coaching job. And I had like four or five other <laughs> side jobs at the same time. So while um, I was working for all different kind of people during that time, this it it's kind of like being an entrepreneur because I was like juggling so many balls at once. 
Um, but I was just like, okay, I'll just have seven jobs at once and pay off my student loans as quickly as possible because I feel nice. trapped when I, <laughs> like, if I owe people money, I feel trapped. So, right. um, I was just like, let's just like wipe that out somehow and then I can do whatever I want. So that's what I did. I ended up in, um, 2012 moving to Spain and playing professional volleyball for a year then after that. And, oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, I will. Playing professional volleyball. That's great. Kill two birds with one stone. I want to learn to speak Spanish and um, I want to play volleyball more. <laughs> Obviously, I was <laughs> a coach and around it all the time. And I was like, I don't think I'm done playing yet. But um, so I did that and I learned to speak conversational Spanish. Um, and, um, and then I came back to the States and moved to San Diego and I was working for, it's called the Adams Avenue Business Association, but it's a small business association that um, assisted uh, small businesses within a neighborhood in San Diego. And it was there really that I learned a lot of the stuff that I would later use um, for running my own business because I was dealing with small businesses all the time and helping them succeed and seeing what they were going through and learning their, you know, trials and, 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 um, successes and sort of taking some of that information and taking that to when I decided to start my own bit or to go full time with my own business. Okay. So, uh, let's talk. Well, I, I, I definitely want to talk for a second. I, I know it's a diversion, but I want to talk about, um, playing volleyball in Spain. Yeah. Um, how far did you get in, in doing that? And when, when did you decide and how did you decide like, okay, I, I'm done playing volleyball and I want to go back to photography? Yeah, I only played for a year. I was invited to play the following year again, but I, so my senior year of college, I tore my second ACL. I tore my first ACL when I was in um, high school, um, rehabbed it and was like good to go, played in college. And then my senior year of college, like right before the NCAA tournament tore my second ACL. And so that was a real bummer. And it felt like um, I had unfinished business because I like, you know, I was at my best ever at my peak and then I tear my ACL and I have no more eligibility to play in college. So I was just like, ah, like that did not go how I wanted it to go. Um, yeah. so that's how I ended up going over and, and playing for a year, a year in Spain. W ultimately, I decided not to for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, I miss my boyfriend <laughs> a lot who <laughs> was, who was in the States. And, um, two, my knees were, I had pretty severe patellar tendonitis at that time. And it just felt like I was running my body into the ground, which is a crazy thing to say at 25 years old. But if you've been playing, uh, I had been playing volleyball at that point for 17 years. And that's just like a lot of jumping and a lot of wear and tear <laughs> on my body. And I was like, no, it's probably time to pack it in and, um, you know, be healthier with my joints anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is a, a common story with student athletes that we probably don't hear that often. Um, in fact, I had a friend when we were growing up, she went to Germany to play professional soccer mm -hmm. um, and ended up breaking her back. She ended up getting a, a, a spinal fracture that ended her career. Um, but amazingly, just like you, she's gone on to do great things. And it's like, uh, I guess in some ways, a blessing in disguise because um, it has opened up new avenues. So you came back, um, you started doing photography. Let's step back one thing. Like in college, you mentioned um, you started doing this uh, right after kind of for yourself on a, on the side as a side hustle. What did you go to college for? Uh, what was your degree in? I studied journalism. So with it, like an emphasis okay. in photojournalism. So it is kind of like this like type of work is definitely in line with what I studied in college. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so that, this has been a passion for a long time for you. Uh, and, and you knew that you were going to go there eventually. Yeah. Um, so what, what are the other interesting things I saw in your background was that you met your husband through adventure travel. Um, I don't know if this is the same person that was the boyfriend before, but, um, same person. You know, yeah. Same person. Okay. So, <laughs> so boyfriend first, so you met your boyfriend that became your husband. Um, how did that happen? Where did you meet and, and how did the whole yeah. thing kind of connect? We met the summer of 2008 on, um, Lake Powell in Arizona. So in between years of college, both of us, uh, worked, we found jobs on the site called cool, coolworks.com. I think it's called or cool jobs. I think it's coolworks.com. And, um, again, I was just waiting tables, but I got to go to cool places. And that's actually, we went the next summer to Alaska together and did the same thing. And, um, so yeah, a lot of the, the photos that you see in, um, the Red Rock 
canyons and stuff in my swell and stone work, I first explored with him in the summer of 2008 when we were working on in the Lake Powell area together. Um, yeah. And so uh, also where my love of the desert Southwest comes in uh, meeting him and, and spending that whole summer in a landscape that was totally foreign to anything I had ever seen before. It's like this beautiful, incredible alien landscape um, was really cool. And then, and then, yeah, we've, we've um, gone to a bunch of other places since then. So yeah, he's, yeah. he's definitely a great adventure travel partner. He, he was the one who got into like canyoneering and then became obsessed. And then well, I'm like, okay, we need to, <laughs> we've got to learn how to do this. And now we've done hundreds of canyons together. So <laughs> it, it looked like I was looking through your photos. It looked like one of the photos, the wedding photos was in Antelope Canyon. Um, it, was that Antelope Canyon or is it one of the other slot canyons that looks the same basically? Yeah, not Antelope Canyon. Um, okay. when, when working with clients, I like to give them some sort of like sense of seclusion, which is somewhat impossible in Antelope Canyon. <laughs> Absolutely. Although Antelope Canyon is crazy beautiful. And I have been there a number of times, never for work though. Um, just for enjoyment because it is spectacular. And I do recommend people go check that out. But yeah, it is, there are a ton of slot canyons in the, in the desert Southwest. And so many of them are like intensely beautiful in, in similar types of ways. But Antelope Canyon is actually super unique in the, in the way that the like light comes down through the canyon. Um, so yeah, highly recommend people go check that out. But that was in a different, in a different canyon that. Um, if you're familiar with the desert South, I'm not going to name it just so it doesn't get overrun with people, <laughs> <I don't> know, <laughs> but, but, um, canyoneers will see that and know <laughs> what canyon that is. Know which one it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'll tell you, we went, uh, and we did a, a Southwest trip and, uh, went to Antelope Canyon and I was so impressed. Uh, so Antelope Canyon is on a native American reservation. Yeah. So, uh, you have native American guides that take you through there. But the the guide that we had, and I'm assuming this is true of all the guides that take you through there, they took our phones from us. They were like, let us take the pictures. Let me take the pictures for you. And they knew so many settings on our phones and they made incredible photos that I don't think I would ever be able to replicate. Obviously, you wouldn't need that help, uh -huh. but I was so impressed by yeah. how much skill that they had as, as guides, but also as photographers for each of the groups that they were taking through. The guides are amazing. They really are really knowledgeable about, um, the Canyon. Obviously they, you know, lived there for a long time and it's their home. Um, they do so many things that you don't even know about too. Like I remember them saying, okay, well, we got a couple rattlesnakes out of the, <laughs> the thing this morning before we're taking you through. I'm like, thank you for that <laughs> because um, don't want to run into a rattlesnake while I'm going through this canyon. So yeah, that's, that's really not something that, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I get the adventure part. That's probably not the part of the adventure you want. No, that's like um, my worst nightmare getting bit by yeah. rattlesnakes. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's talk about how you kind of started this whole wedding photography part of it. Like, how did you get your first client? Uh how did that happen? Great question. Yeah. So in, um, I was working in San Diego, um, at the same time that I was working that job at the business, uh, the small business association, I, um, was getting into photography more and more or starting to think like, okay, maybe this is my next step, my next step, my next move, but I didn't really know how to make it my next step or my next move. And so, I started shooting traditional weddings um, in my free time. They're mostly on the weekends. Like I could do that and very quickly realized like, this is not for me. I don't really like any part of this. <laughs> my, I'm not interested in the imagery. Um, it's a lot of repetition and um, it, it is, is it that it feels like it's the same thing. Every yes. Time? It's the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah. And I wasn't particularly interested in weddings at all, to be totally honest. Like, I don't really, this sounds weird and strange, but I don't really <laughs> care about weddings in the traditional sense of like, um, I care about two people who are committing their lives to one another, but I don't really care about all the pomp and circumstance and, and, um, you know, lavish parties or anything like that. And so the, segue into Swell and Stone was when I realized that some people aren't getting married in that traditional type of way. Um, and my first adventure wedding was in, uh, so that was like 2013 and 2014 that I was doing that and realizing that ugh, traditional weddings are like not my thing. 
And I was like, I don't know how I'm like ever going to make this work. And then in 2015, I had a friend whose sister was getting married in Deception Pass State Park in Washington. And um, I went up there and photographed her wedding. And um, di- like, that was the first time I realized, oh, people are getting married in really non-traditional ways. They had like rented out these tiny cabins in the state park for all of the guests. And they just played lawn games the whole time. And it was a beautiful view on a beach with like the amazing forests up there. And there was so much to it that I liked and really very little to it that I didn't like. And I was like, wait, people are doing this is possible. And so that was my, my first time thinking like, okay, this is a possibility. And then and over the next couple of years, I started noticing in the in the wedding photography space a trend of more people sort of getting married in that way, and more um, more photographers shooting kind of only specifically this type of uh, wedding. So um, when I moved to the East Coast uh, in eventually in 2017, I started thinking more about that, and then started Swell and Stone in 2018, and then have been doing that and pretty much had full booked seasons uh, ever since then. So for the last three years. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, okay. I got to ask you've done this now for a few years. What is the one place that you like, even to this day, you absolutely loved being there and photo- taking photos there, uh, you know, regardless of the fact that it was a wedding, like what is that, that number one place? Oh, this is such an impossible question to answer. <laughs> Everyone, <laughs> I knew it was going to be hard. Yeah. So uh, can I, can I give you three kind of? Um, sure, sure. I'll take three. <laughs> <laughs> so the desert Southwest, honestly, anywhere in the desert Southwest, um, particularly in Southern Utah, that whole area. There's so much amazing stuff there and the views are incredible. There's so much seclusion. You can be by yourself if you want to. And, um, yeah, it's just incredible. And then now I primarily work in new England. And so my favorite places to photograph in new England are like, there's a bunch of people don't know this a lot. There's a bunch of islands off the coast of like Massachusetts and the coast of Rhode Island. And I love, taking the ferry out and right. And those islands and like the rock formations are incredible. Like it's incredibly beautiful. And then Vermont in new England also is kind of like ideal if a wonderland of beauty, basically like with the mountains and the waterfalls. And, um, if you've never been to new England in the fall, I highly recommend, I think it's like the greatest place in the world to be in the fall. So with with like the leaves changing and everything. So many okay. trees, so much foliage. It's people lose their minds, rightfully so. <laughs> yeah, w- one of my uh, bucket list items. We we've driven up there. We're big road trip people, um, but we didn't get to do this. Is the Ben and Jerry's factory up in Vermont? So that, I that's drive still on by the list, it. So. I drive by it all the time, like literally multiple times this uh, fall that I'm up there, and uh-huh. um, I still haven't gone. So I, that's also on my bucket list. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. You need to find a client that is really into ice cream and see if they want to do a wedding. Great at, uh, idea, or just stop there as. <laughs> part of their elopement day, you know, See, like there just you a go. stop there on you your go. day here. We're getting ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you know, with the business, you are kind of all over the place, right? You travel quite a bit. Um, what do you do in terms of like dealing with managing the responsibilities and, and commitments of running a business? Like, are there tools? Like, how do you deal with all of this stuff? Because a lot of times you're not home, uh, and like, you've got to deal with, the finances and the bills and the this, that, and the other, right? And scheduling, yeah. like, is there some kind of tool or set of tools that you use that for you is a lifesaver? Yeah, I do have um, a set of tools that I use. One of them is called Depsado, which is my um, customer relationship management system. And I have like all of my communication with my clients automated through that. Um, so that's obviously incredibly helpful. I have like emails pre-written basically for their information, like everything that they, you know, need to do or the info. And so as we go through, cause I also help, I don't just show up on their elopement day. I help them plan like pretty much every step of the process. So I oftentimes pick out their ceremony spot or, you know, help them find the perfect, um, risk, like, you know, celebration location where, you know, if they have 
five or 10 of their closest friends and family with them that it, they're allowed to like drink alcohol and whatever in the outdoors. And, um, so all of that goes through the, my CRM Dips Auto, which is incredible, really helpful. I also do all my contracts and invoicing through there, um, which is amazing. Um, I use a QuickBooks self-employed to keep track of all my finances, which is awesome. And uh, like, honestly, I do most of it on my phone. I can just like categorize and, and do my mileage and like literally everything financial where I keep track of my business is done on that. Um, and then for a gallery delivery, um, which is like how I get the images to my clients, I use pick time, which I, it's like probably one of my favorite things ever that has made my business like better and easier on me, really. So I deliver the images through there. So clients can download both websites and high res images, but they can also create albums and framed prints and all kinds of prints straight from that gallery. So where photographers used to maybe spend like a lot of time after the fact helping clients make albums and all that kind of stuff, they can sort of self guide themselves through that process because it's it's they want to create what they want to create anyway. So if I were to do it for them, I would have to go around and switch a bunch of stuff. So this just makes it really easy for them to like see the layout and do it all themselves. Um, and I can't tell you like how helpful and time saving that has been. Yeah. So w- one of the things you said there, it just sparked a question for me. So you're help. you're not just coming the day of just to take photos. You're helping a bunch on the front end to figure out. And I think I saw this on your site too, of like, Hey, what happens when it rains? And you know, I'm still going to take pictures and document that as a part of the experience of that day. But how are you finding these unique locations? I mean, you've got experience because you've been to a bunch of them and clients are probably taking you to some, but there's probably a bunch that you've never been to. And, and, you know, you're like finding them somehow. How Mm -hmm. are you finding them? Yeah. So, um, when I was running Cat Carney Photography before I started Swan Stone, I lived in a built out truck for two years and I basically just like traveled and worked and traveled nonstop. So I have been to a lot of places <laughs> all over the United States <laughs> and, you know, I have photos of all of them because I'm a photographer. So when I visit places, I take pictures of the places. And so that was like how I started. And so I, I recommended uh, clients were, you know, inquiring and then I would send them photos that I had taken while I had been on a hiking trip there or like whatever. And that's how I ended up, um, you know, taking guiding clients essentially to these locations and, and being like, well, I could tell you per- firsthand, this is an incredibly beautiful spot. And this waterfall would be like the perfect spot to say your vows or whatever. And, um, so personal ex- personal experience number one of having been there, and then second, if I haven't been there or you know somewhere that I've or I have just a spot in my head that I know about, um, I use Google Earth a lot <laughs> to show to show clients like okay, this is what it looks like. The sun will be setting here at this time, um, you know. So there's uh, Google is a great <laughs> tool in terms of <laughs> you can really travel. Um, without leaving, you know, your couch or your desk or whatever it may be. And, um, so I, it's a combination of, yeah, places I have been or places that I have wanted to go. And, um, uh, occasionally it's, um, clients saying, well, this place is special and near and dear to our hearts. In that case, they know the location. And so, yeah. And, and then, um, uh, you know, once I've been and photographed couples in each of these locations, it happens more and more that couples come to me saying, I want the experience exactly like so-and-so that I saw on your website. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. And and has the majority of uh, the kind of experiences that you've done, have they all been in the US or has there been international exposure as well? Yeah. So I think almost entirely the US with maybe the exception of, um, well, no, because I, that's not true. I've done work for my commercial and editorial stuff internationally. Um, right. but I think actually uh, with it, Puerto Rico is within the U S also. So yeah, it's yeah. all within the U S and I haven't done can and I haven't done Canada or Mexico. I've done other stuff there, but yeah, so all the couples so far have been in the U S. Um, and I think 
I'm going to keep it that way just because finding like work visas and all that is a bunch of logistical stuff that I kind of don't want to deal with. <laughs> For working outside of the U.S., so right, yeah. okay. So I, yeah, I was going to ask that. So you you think you would want to do that, but it's the logistics behind doing it that is preventing. Yeah, humanity. I think the logistics are are too much. I already deal with a lot of logistics in terms of like helping couples <laughs> plan. I don't need to add like finding myself work visas on top of it. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. And is the, is the company is it just you, or do you have help in terms of organizing all of this stuff? And do you have other photographers or? Yeah, is it, it is a one woman show. It is me. I sometimes hire um, other photographers to help with a portion of it. Um, so d depending on if like if I need a second shooter, I'll hire someone to to come shoot with me. Um, and I have an editor who, for the most part, um, does some culling, which it just means like choosing the images that will eventually be edited and and um, editing. And that has been an incredible help in terms of like getting some of my time back. Um, so I, I definitely still edit in terms of like doing all of the final and finishing touches, but I, I spend maybe like, you know, I've gotten a huge percentage of my time back that I would have spent editing because I now have an editor. So that has been yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So, okay. So you've obviously sound to me like you've made this leap. You love it. This was the right thing to do for you. What advice would you give to other people that are kind of teetering on the edge of, you know, running their side hustle and then thinking about going full time? Like what, what like tipped you over to be like, yeah, I am all in. I don't want to work for anybody else. This is my thing. Like what, what advice would you give them to be like, yeah, you should do it. Or this is the right time to do it. Mm. Oh, so I think there's a couple things like working, wanting to work for yourself is one of them, right? So there are a lot of things that come with being a photographer that have nothing to do with photography. So you have to, <laughs> you have to be interested in all of those things as well. You have to be interested in working for yourself and running your own business and doing a lot of stuff that is not necessarily the art of photography. <laughs> so if you have no inclination to do that, maybe like, um, figure something else out in terms of like being able to do photography, but not running your own business because running your own business, I would say honestly is like 75% of it. And the other 25% <laughs> is like actually taking the photos and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And then the other thing is, um, you know, this particular niche that I'm in really made sense for me as a person, like the way that I lived my life before I even started doing um, photography at all. Um, or, you know, the way that I've lived my life for pretty much my whole life, which is I love being in the outdoors. I love, um, nature and I love taking photos of people interacting with nature. And so find something, a niche that is really true to you. And that might be different than, um, shooting elopements in the outdoors. It might be, you know, shooting elopements in the city, or it might be, um, shooting, you know, product place somewhere or something like that. So, Really, um, like if you hate working with people, like don't strive for a job that <laughs> they work with <laughs> inanimate objects or something. I don't know, but just make sure that it's true to you and to, to the things that you like doing, because if you don't love doing it, you won't continue to want to do it every single day. And it is like a lot of a dish. It's a lot of, you know, work that you maybe didn't think was going to be the case when you started <laughs> doing it. Yeah. So. I, I think that's one of those hidden things about being an entrepreneur that a lot of people don't realize or talk about, that there's a lot of stuff that isn't actually the, the you know, stuff that gets written about, right? Like yeah. you get written about, about your business, about the photography, but like you said, probably the majority of your time is spent on not that, it's spent yeah. on like other stuff. So like what is on the, the computer. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. So what is that one thing? Like I know what my one things are that I hate in, in, in starting up companies. What is the one thing for you that you still continue to have to do because it's your business, but that you don't like? Oh gosh. So I, I feel like I'm a weird entrepreneur in that I really like the business side of things along with the artistry side of things. Um, and I think that's why it's been a great fit for me. One thing that I really don't like doing that I have to. Like maybe balancing the books or. No, I kind I of like know. doing that. That's so Do weird. Okay, that's great. <laughs> like 
I like uh, knowing exactly where everything's going. I like, you know, having control over my own destiny. Um, oh, I know what it is. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's um, blogging and then keywording all of the images on my blog. So it's such a tedious job that is so boring. And <laughs> it just like, it's almost mind numbing. Like I'm keywording each of these images. So they're searchable on Google, you know? And um, yeah, I should probably, that should be my next outsourcing. <laughs> <I'm> realizing <laughs> I haven't done it in a while because I've had my busy season and now I'm going into my slower season. And that's when I do all of that mind numbing work. So <laughs> yeah. See, there's, there's always something for an entrepreneur. Yeah. Like, well, I do it, but you know, I really don't enjoy that part of it. Oh yeah. Um, okay. So just, I, I've got two more questions for sure. you. One, how do you define success for your business? For me, um, success is to be able to continue doing what I love doing every day and not have to go get a nine to five job. So I'm making it financially and loving what I do. I mean, that's kind of, um, yeah, that's how I would break it down. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it is uh, It's pretty straightforward. Okay. So my last question is actually a tip for our listeners. Um, you've had a lot of experience taking photos in unusual situations. So let's give the listeners, uh, some advice for them when they're taking photos, obviously they're not going to have the same gear as you. Um, but like, what's one of the best tricks or tips that you can give to them, uh, and what's maybe one of the things that they should avoid uh, when they're trying to make, uh, you know, some great photos of when they're out. Yeah. So time of day is huge with photography. So if you can be out at sunrise or sunset and take advantage of the golden light and, you know, just the landscape, if you're shooting the landscape or if you're shooting people kind of either way, it doesn't matter if you can take advantage of when the sun is lower on the horizon, everything looks nicer than when it's straight overhead if it's sunny outside, you know, so shooting in midday. That's like probably the simplest thing that if you are outside with your, you know, camera with your phone, that will, the landscape looks so different in soft light versus harsh light. Um, yeah. And then, well, if you're taking photos of people, like, you know, almost all of what I do is people interacting with the landscape. I would say avoid posing people as much as possible instead, <laughs> like interact with them. And, you know, I use a style that like kind of gives action items every once in a while, but it's really like hanging out, having fun, like enjoying the day and the whole experience. And then also, um, capturing like the candid in between moments rather than you know, moving a hand slightly one way or another way, because I feel like those always look forced versus, um, you know, if you're, if you're giving action items and just hanging out with someone, you'll get a lot more natural, basically for lack of a better word, poses, just don't pose them <laughs> just take <laughs> candidates. <laughs> yeah. Don't pose them, make it, make it seem like real life. Like it actually is. Yeah. Like just live, just live like it's actually life and then take photos in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. Well, Kat, uh, this has been absolutely phenomenal and so interesting. I appreciate you coming on uh, the podcast. Again, uh, Kat Carney with swellandstone.com uh, is the website. Uh, if you're looking for a photographer and you're having an awesome wedding in a non-normal place, well, I, hopefully th these will be the normal places, right? And then we'll say the the other ones are the, the non-normal places. It's becoming more uh, and more normal, yeah. <laughs> it's becoming more and more normal, more and more fun. Yeah. Um, visit Kat Carney at swellandstone.com. Thanks again, Kat, for coming on, on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Side Hustle to Small Business Podcast, powered by Hiscox. To learn more about how Hiscox can help protect your small business through intelligent insurance solutions, visit Hiscox.com. That's H-I-S-C-O-X.com. I'm your host, Sanjay Pari. You can find me on Twitter at, at Sanjay, that's S-A-N-J-A-Y, or on my website at SanjayPark.com.